y'all, I'm Cece, and today I am here to talk about some diverse anthologies that are at the very top of my TBR. I want to say thank you so much to DK Books for sponsoring this video. I am very excited to talk about this because my anthology and short story collection TBRs are getting, like, out of control. And since these 10 books are all currently at the top of my TBR, I figure you all might want to know more about them as well. I think a more accurate title for this video would be the top eight anthologies on my TBR and the top two short story collections on my TBR, but that's I think that's getting a little wordy for a title. <laughs> but I do have eight anthologies to talk about, which are books by multiple authors, as well as two short story collections, which are collections of short stories all by the same author. And I thought it would also be great to combine all of these books because there are so many different authors when it comes to the anthologies in particular, that it opens up so many options in terms of authors for you all to check out. Anthologies are an incredible way to discover new authors, so I really hope that this video opens up an avenue to all of you, to new authors, new stories, new stuff that you want to read. This includes a variety of fiction and non-fiction. With all of that in mind, I want to jump into the first anthology that is sitting at the top of my TBR, and that is Allies. Real talk about showing up, screwing up, and trying again. Allies is a new anthology edited by Shakira Bourne and Dana Allison Levy, and it includes 17 personal essays by 17 best-selling YA authors about allyship. Whether that's being an ally, needing an ally, or moments when these authors have stood up for friends or strangers. Allies is one of those anthologies that I jump to read because it includes such a diverse and wide wide range of experiences, and like I said, it opens up so many new authors for me to discover. And I'm a huge advocate for the LGBTQIA plus community, like my whole thing on this channel is about supporting this community, uplifting this community, but it's also important to remember that I'm an ally in so many other things, and I'm constantly learning how to be better at being an ally. Besides just essays, this collection also includes journaling prompts, moments for self-reflection, as well as further reading that you can do to learn more. I'm also pretty excited because I've read books by a couple of these authors before, but not all of them, so really looking forward to that opportunity. Allies is available now if you want to be able to pick up your own copy, do some reading, learn about allyship, learn about supporting others, or how to be a better ally. And thank you again so much to DK Books for sponsoring this video, sending along allies. I can't wait to read it. Okay, since we started with essay collections, I think I'm going to continue on by listing my other essay collection. That would be Gender Identity, Sexuality, and Autism, Voices from Across the Spectrum by Ava A. Mendez and Meredith R. Moroni. It really does take a long time to say the whole title, huh? So this is a collection of essays, personal experiences from people who are autistic and also part of the LGBTQIA plus community. Specifically, this is about how those two communities intersect, and there is actually a huge crossover between the LGBTQIA plus community and the autistic community. I wanted to prioritize this because this is a collection from autistic people discussing their experiences and then it's put into more context and there's more research provided so you can kind of learn more about what these personal experiences mean on a larger scale. I can't wait to read more about this. I think it sounds absolutely fascinating. So, so this is the other like essay non-fiction anthology that was on my list. I'll let you know what I think of it when I read it. Next up, I want to talk about Unbroken, 13 Stories Starring Disabled Teens. This is an anthology edited by Marika Nijkamp. I've wanted to read this for ages and ages. This is a collection of stories about disabled characters written by disabled authors, and the point is to create this huge picture of what it looks like to be a disabled teen, whether that's recognizing stories from the past, the present, the future. When it comes to diverse stories, one of the things that is is most difficult to find in doing research is stories about disabled characters, particularly stories by disabled authors. It's something I'm constantly trying to prioritize and something that continues to be difficult, but this collection has been on my TBR because it is a collection that is all by disabled authors and includes so many different genres of stories. I can't wait to read this. Much like a lot of the anthologies on this list, I have only read a book by one or two of these authors, but I'm crossing my fingers that 
that I'm going to be able to read a ton more afterwards. Next, I want to talk about an anthology called Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time. This is edited by Hope Nicholson and David Alexander Robertson. This is a collection of indigenous science fiction and a little bit of fantasy, specifically following Two-Spirit and LGBTQIA plus main characters. I love a speculative anthology. I love it, especially when an anthology is able to combine voices from a community that isn't as represented in publishing today. There is a line in the summary that I really, really love that I want to quote because I think it sets such a great tone for this anthology and why I'm interested in reading it. It's the last line of the summary and it says, these are stories of machines and magic, love and self-love. Sounds spectacularly up my alley. Next, I want to talk about a book that I only got recently, and that would be Speculative Fiction for Dreamers, a Latinx anthology by Alex Hernandez, Matthew David Goodwin, and Sarah Rafael Garcia. So this is the second anthology that's part of kind of a project. The first one was called Latinx Rising. It's part of a project to highlight a new generation of writers. So this is from a variety of Latinx creators who are working with speculative fiction right now, and there's a ton of different stuff represented here, a lot of different styles, stories, ideas, but the uniting thing is all of these authors imagining new Latinx futures. I've been excited to read this ever since I got the email about it. I think it sounds completely fascinating and it sounds perfect for this time of year since we're in the midst of Latinx Heritage Month. I'm hoping to read it soon, maybe you will too. Next, I want to talk about a collection that... I'm so you know what? We're just gonna talk about it. It's called That Way Madness Lies, and it is edited by Dahlia Adler. Um, Dahlia Adler is kind of the queen of anthology editing. <laughs> I really want to read the anthology His Hideous Heart that she edited as well, which is a collection of retellings of Edgar Allan Poe stories. That Way Madness Lies kind of nudges that one out of the top of the list because it is specifically retellings of Shakespeare, and Shakespeare's a fave of mine. <laughs> so specifically, these are supposed to be modern takes on Shakespeare. Again, my passion. And the thing is, there are so many authors whose books I have loved that are part of this collection. And the fact that I love Shakespeare and the fact that this anthology is definitely diverse as hell, it's just like so much. There's so much that's going for it. So one of these days, definitely going to have to get myself a copy of That Way Madness Lies so I can celebrate some Shakespeare love. I think I'm just feeling this because I just barely rewatched 10 Things I Hate About You and like it's one of the best modern Shakespeare adaptations so I'm riding high. Next up I want to mention another anthology that's kind of like a a companion to a different anthology <laughs> and that is Out Now. This is edited by Sandra Mitchell and is the companion anthology to... Where the hell is All Out? Ah. Okay, it's the companion anthology to All Out. So All Out was, um, the subtitle is the no longer, or yeah, the no longer secret stories of queer teens throughout the ages. This is a historical fiction collection and every single story stars a queer main character. Um, they start in like the 1500s and go up into the 90s, I think. Anyway, I loved reading this. I was excited for ages to read it. I finally read it and it wound up being just fantastic. So a companion anthology came out called Out Now. This is a collection of stories featuring the queer teens of today. And um, considering it has the same editor with a variety of new authors, I'm assuming I'm going to love it. Um, I'm actually, I'll be honest, like a story in already, I think, or two. Liking it so far. Very excited because C.B. Lee's story is next and I adore C.B. She's a friend of mine and I am sure that this is going to be great. I'm excited to read this. I love reading queer story collections if you can't tell, <laughs> which means y'all are never gonna believe this, but this, this last anthology I have to talk about before we get into the short story collections, it's also a queer anthology. <laughs> so this last anthology is Proud, edited by Juno Dawson. For ages, I think I mixed up this book and Juno's other book, um, This Book is Gay, which is right here. 
because this has like the rainbow on the side and then Proud has has the rainbow on the cover. I just constantly confused them. Also because Juno Dawson. I believe this is a collection that has a few more UK authors than are usually included in these anthologies. So this anthology has stories, it also has poetry, and then the other thing that's going on with it is that every single entry is accompanied by a piece of art by a queer artist as well. Some of my favorite writers in the world are attached to this anthology. Um, Alice Oseman is part of this, um, Dean Adda, Moira Fowley-Doyle, David Levithan, and a ton a ton more. Like I said, I'm constantly mixing this book up with This Book is Gay, also probably because I've wanted to read both of them so badly. It's not just because I have a goal to own every rainbow book. <laughs> Do I love owning rainbow books? Yes. Is it my goal to own a book if it has a rainbow on it? Yes. What was the point I was making? <laughs> Oh, I always confuse these books, but the point is that it's because I really want to read both of them, so it kind of works out. Okay, so now I want to move on to the two short story collections that are on my TBR. I really wanted to be able to talk about these. They do differ slightly from an anthology, but I love short fiction in general, so I always kind of combine the two, and these two collections are by authors I'm very interested in that I haven't I haven't seen around as much, so I also wanted to let you all know about them just in case you don't. The other reason I really wanted to include these two particular story collections is because they are part of a linked narrative. So all of the stories, despite being different, are set in some kind of unique world where each story you're reading is from the point of view of a different character, and I thought that that was really interesting and kind of worth including in here as well. So first up we have Where the Wild Ladies Are by Ayoka Matsuda. This was translated by Polly Barton. This collection is inspired by Japanese folk tales, and it takes a lot of those folk tales and completely reimagines them. So every story in this collection is about a so-called spirited woman, and these women go about their daily lives. They are also ghosts. So this is a folklore collection that's about feminine passions are sort of cultivated. They're supposed to be expressed and brought to the forefront. And then this is also about people who are impacted by sort of unseen forces that are around them and how that kind of impacts us on a daily basis. So I thought this was really interesting. I thought the fact that this was all set in this world of Japanese folklore and what that means for all of these different women was really interesting. I'm curious to read this. And the last book that I want to talk about as part of this wrap-up is The World Doesn't Require You, stories by Rion Amilcar Scott. So this collection is set in this invented city. Um, it's called Cross River, Maryland. The point is that this town is the setting of the only successful slave revolt. So we are looking at kind of the ramifications today within this city. Like I was saying, every story in this collection has a different narrator, but they are all set in this fictional town of Cross River, and it is a collection about what this town still looks like today. Well, it also has the chance to talk about some of the more reverberating issues, the issues that remain a part of this town since it was created, and it's a chance to talk about religion and violence and race. Um, plus there's a bit of magical realism. I've been eager to read this one for a while. I picked it up on a whim at BookCon, the only year I ever went. <laughs> so this copy is signed, actually. Rian always crossed off the fact always crossed off the int in doesn't so that um every copy said the world does require you which i thought was lovely i've just had this one kicking around on my shelves for ages and i didn't realize that this was a story collection that was set all within one place because i think it might have moved to the top of my tbr a little faster if i'd remembered that little detail okay y'all that's it those are the top 10 anthologies and short story collections on my personal TBR that specifically feature diverse voices. I hope this gave you the opportunity to learn about some titles you might not have known about, maybe added some new books to your TBR, or you can get the chance to read these books and discover some new authors. Just a reminder, Allies is available now and you can learn more about it and get a copy for yourself if you check out the link down in my description below. Let me know about some anthologies and story collections that are on your personal TBR 
and maybe I can add some new ones to mine. We'll get that list going even longer. If you've made it this far in the video, maybe include a little sunshine emoji in your comment so that I can see it, see that you watched this long, and enjoy some sunshines. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found some new stuff, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!